Federal Bureau of Control, how may I help you? I need those field reports typed up and in management's hands first thing the tomorrow. The Bureau's the best at what it does, protecting everyday Americans from foreign threats. There's the new girl, standing around daydreaming when she should be getting work done. I mean, who the hell does she think she is? The director? What? Am I not the director? Toddy up the coffee cups. Deliver mail. Scan the forms. <gasps> oh. Time is money. I can fix it. I'll try harder. Oh, deliver the mail. You can't find good help these days. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're dismissed. Anything for the Bureau. I'm overwhelmed right now. That'll be all. My pleasure. I'm the lowest ranking member? I've got nothing more for you. Thank you. Thank you. <gasps> what? I've got nothing more for you. Let me know if you need anything else. There's a shelter there. And this does look like the FBC that we know. Now get out of here. We'll have to be of assistance. Maybe it's internal? Don't let it go to your head. No problem. Emily. Am I even allowed to talk to Emily? No, he's not in. <laughs> no, not today. A research project he has to oversee. <laughs> yes, top secret stuff. Like strictly classified. What? <laughs> oh, he is, isn't he? Did you see him sing karaoke at the Christmas party? Oh, dreamy. Ugh, don't remind me. We have this new office girl, and I honestly don't know how she got the job. <gasps> no experience, but every little thing needs to be explained. Internal recruiting, if you can believe it. I heard she was in maintenance before. As the janitor. Really? Yeah, it's a pain. Oh, look, I gotta go. Call you later? Okay, yes, we will. Bye! What? That's not the Emily I know and love? She wouldn't talk about boys and shopping at the office? Oh... We literally have to get coffee for people, scan papers, and deliver mail. Hold on. After we deliver the mail? The quest thing came back. I'm kinda wondering if we even have to do this. Look, it came back again. We have a crisis on our hands. Yes, not a serious injury. Hey, Ms. Marshall called in sick today. She was taken to hospital. We don't know if she's coming back. Ms. Marshall really is quite a But only the direct secretary ever brings in his mail. Who's going to do it today? He's been waiting for his mail all day. But no one's stepping up. Honestly. I'd hate to be here when the director realizes his mail isn't coming. The director is a man. Is it Trench? <gasps> or is it Dylan? Right away, sir. Oh. Clean up the coffee cups. Sorry, it's clean now. Thank you. Pick it up. I'll do my best. Yeah, I don't think we actually have to do it. Oh! Hey! That's Trench! Oh! More forms to scan? That's Trench, alright! 
Actually, we never got a good look at Trench, except for in the very beginning. So my memory of him is a bit foggy. Director's office. That must be where they want me to go. Oh. Why do they keep you around? Please give me a chance. I can do better. I wonder if it's possible for me to go to the shelter. What? This is happening inside the shelter. What? The people outside are okay, but not inside. The nerve of this woman. Who does she think she is? Just want to deliver the mail to the director. He's gonna be angry. Oh, remember this place? In the very beginning. Zachariah Trench. The oldest house. Ah, the number next to the devil. No one's really complaining about the workplace, and they think Trench is the greatest. We don't even have clearance level one. Hey! Are you sure you are not lost? Maybe you can find yourself in the director's office. Ati. The only person whose voice I can hear clearly. Hmm. Zachariah Trench. Oh, great. I was just waiting for my mail. Just leave it on the desk there, please. <clears throat> See, you're the, uh... You're the new girl, right? Welcome to the Bureau. We're glad to have you on board. And you should be proud. We do very important work here. <clears throat> oh, and don't worry about starting at the bottom. I wasn't always the director, you know. My uh, Bureau career began as a, a lowly agent. Those lowly? Days. <laughs> I never dreamed I'd one day be sitting here, an old man in this big chair. Like they say, when you're... When you're pushed upwards, you end up out of your comfort zone. The hotline. Here's your mail, sir. Please, take the outgoing mail as well. Thank you. Very good. Better run along now. I have a lot of work to do. Important bureau business. Oh, oh of course. Of course. Right, away. right away. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Director. Director. Hey, thank you. What? What is happening? I don't like this. What? 
This isn't me. I'm not me. Oh! I can't. Why can't I feel you? <gasps> oh, I've forgotten something. I can't think. Oh, I'm lost. Oh, where are you? I can't feel anything. I. Why do they keep you around? I don't want to be alone here. Where am I? What is this? I want an end. Wake up, please. I want to go home. The flowers. There's security people here now. Were they here before? Oh, is there really a point in me doing this? Forgot something. The hell is happening with this guy? Well, that guy's not even one of the hits we've seen before, right? Why do they keep you around? Emily! Oh, have you seen him? Mr. Faden, the new director? <gasps> oh! yeah. Very handsome. With Helen God as well, he'll be needing a new secretary, don't you think? No! They say he is very smart as well. I'd be great to have someone in charge of him really put the bureau back on. Was this all a ploy by Dylan? At least the his infected version? To take the spot of director away from me? Oh my god, I don't know what's happening. Maybe we have to deliver the mail to the director again. But I don't see a tube there. Maybe we gotta do some stuff first. Under hell. It's true. We all knew, I suppose, but no one wanted to say it out loud. But now it's out in the open. As painful as it is, it's a relief to admit it like a weight has been lifted. It's gone on too long. The director is crazy. Insane. Trench has grown more and more out of hand. He's dangerous. Finally, the Bureau were doing something about it. They even brought Trench's replacement in for a visit. Who is this guy? The way he dresses, I don't recognize it at all. He's a little bit hiss infected. The resonance leaking out of him. Oh. Ah. Uh. We can't walk in this room. No, these people are not... They're not people. It's still Trench, though. <gasps> what? No, Emily! I know you're not like that. What about the shelter? Same crap. The mail is red. Doesn't she know how dangerous the old director is? He's unstable. He'll tear her apart. The old director? She's going to the old director's office. They must be working together. She must be in on it. What? Neither of these really reflect the reality that we were in before. At first they really loved Trench and now they really don't like him. When in reality, or at least the one that we know about, I feel like they were pretty neutral towards him. You should keep trying. You are getting closer. 
I need to go inside. I need to keep moving. Ati, I'll trust you. We've been invaded. I must act. I have a plan, an answer. I'll take the slide projector to the nostalgia department. I'll nostalgia? Turn it on. I'll bring the hiss in. I'll fix this. I can hear them plotting against me. We've been invaded, corrupted. I've lost Darling. He was the first to go. He's been exposed to Hedrin's resonance. It controls him now. It controls everyone who wears the amplifier device. What? I ordered them not to use the damn things. They didn't listen. Hedrin corrupted the Bureau. They'll never be people again. They're either dead or they're monsters. I'll stop them. I have a secret ally. The Nostalgia Department. I have my own slide for the projector. I took it. A memento. In ordinary. After the girl burned them. It's burnt, but it'll work. The hiss will save us all. I, um, lost my train of thought. I, I, um, it, it's confused. Like, uh, somebody, you know, switching channels too fast. But, uh, I, I, I see so much, but it's, it's, it's too fast. On the expedition through the slide, Something got into my ear, and it hurt at first. But then it didn't. The bleeding. It uh, started as a, a distant whisper. Like something you hear in a, a dream. Like a faraway voice calling you to wake up. I'd open my eyes with those, those words still on my lips. See, in the dream, they had made perfect sense but awake they're like a, like a foreign language already forgotten then the sense of loss hits like losing a child like losing yourself you see I was being taught a song a poem prayer that would light up my world and, and make me break through, make all this pain worth it. Something once lost was found and it made a home in me, a spring with like waves carving me and making me see and it grew until it filled me. And I receded deeper into myself, into this office, locked in, in this oldest house, which is my uh, aging body. Oh. I stared in awe through the people, and I was filled with knowledge and made better. You know, I, uh, often feel like I'm <clears throat> being watched. Yeah, like there's someone watching me. They can see me, but I can't see them. I remember it was like, like this dream I had last night. See, there was a, there was this man mm -hmm, here in this very room. And then, well, sometimes he was a, a plumber unclogging the drain and well, because there was a fish stuck there. Auntie. Yeah, a big fish. But sometimes he was he was an old god, you see, and, and he had put the fish there in in the uh, the first place to uh, well to, to, to keep the waste. There, there was rising waste uh, from leaking out, so he was um, oh he was he was conflicted, but he but but he knew many things, but, but he was. He was also 
sort of senile, like me. It, it was more like a... It was like a, a riddle, or, or, or an omen. It, it, it wasn't a very good one, or, or an interesting one, but... but I, I get so confused so easily. I, um... It, it, it's it's so very hard to uh, to follow every everything that's happening. <sighs> the way he talks is pretty reminiscent of the whole his thing. Something got in his ear earlier. Darling mentioned that Trench went into the other dimension, and his ear started bleeding. You are the one who brought the his here. Really interesting that he uses the term his too, because apparently that's something that Jesse made up. Oh, are we seeing the past right now? Trench used to be really good. And then, after he went into the dimension, something lodged itself inside him, and now people are saying that he's turned crazy. Oh, I don't know who's right or wrong here, or even if such a thing exists, because the whole time, we always received a lot of help from Trench via the hotline messages, but as we went on looking at Dr. Darling's presentation, you get the sense that he thinks he's doing something good too. So at the very minimum, both these people think they're doing something good, but I don't know if there is like an objective good here, and do I need to decide who to listen to, or what? Goodbye, Director. I won't let them win. Dylan. That's how it happened. The hiss got Trench first. He turned on the projector. He let them in. Yes. I have to remember the hiss. The hiss is the enemy. <gasps> this is all inside my head. The hiss burrowing in. I'm trapped in here. Yes, taking over. You understand? That's the first step to getting out of here. Yes, yes, because the last that we know that actually happened, we were trying to reach Polaris, but the hiss burrowed itself in. But now we're seeing the cracks. We're seeing the cracks. The first step to getting out of here is knowing you're trapped. And I think we're getting that down. Oh. Wait. I need to get to Trench's office. Yes. Okay, nobody wants to say anything anymore. Underhill? No, we don't need to dawdle. No, no. You can hear the hiss elevated in here now. They're doing that chant. I will fight this. I will find a way to push them out. Oh, that's why it's so... Are they really talking about the Bureau, or is this more like my head's trying to tell me that something's wrong inside my head? Someone's trying to take over. I just realized, this place is very... unsaturated looking, the colors, but the only color that's really highlighted is the red. And why is that? We know exactly why that is! It's the color of the hiss! <laughs> Welcome back. 
I knew I chose a good assistant. <laughs> Thank you, Ati, for your encouragement. Or at least I think that's what it is. I need my gun. The thunder song distorts you. Earlier, when the credits started rolling, the fake ones, it said that the narrative lead was by Leave Your Insides by the Door. And I was like, oh, is that like a like a nickname? You are a worm through time. The thunder soul storms you. I know what I must do. Yellow and red. Start at the beginning. Inverted is I should have seen it earlier. This is my mess to clean up. My fight. No one else's. I am the director. Hello, this is Dr. Casper Darling. I have a classified message for the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. I have sad news. Hedrin is gone now. Oh. But it was not a source. It was a catalyst. Do you understand? You must go to my office. The end game. It will be revealed. Dr. Darling. Oh. But remember how the hotline is reserved for pretty much dead people. Previous directors and people in the board. The fact that we're seeing Darling here now... No, it's okay. I won't leave my insides by the door, thank you. Oh shit, it's all me! Oh, I'm back in this outfit. Lovely. I've missed you. They're trying to take over. It's a hostile takeover. In Dr. Darling's last message, he said he won't be here to witness whatever's gonna happen. Because he's now... Oh, I don't even know. Find Darling's office. Darling has an office, an executive? This is open now. I don't remember Darling having an office here. Oh! <gasps> you again! You're gone. Dead. I can't feel you. I can't. This is what Dylan wanted all along. <gasps> but there is something. I can feel it, but I don't know what. The motel is a place of power, of change, a place to pass through, connecting everything. This is a dream inside my head. Why shouldn't it take me anywhere I want to go? Around one constant, they revolve. Jesse Faden. Visit Ordinary, where nothing ever is. That's a pretty good town slogan. <laughs> the oldest house is a shifting place. Around one constant, they revolve. Me. I'm the constant. I'm the one who has control here. I should be taking control. This motel does not decide where I go. I decide where I go. I want my service, and I want it now. <laughs> really?
Oh my god. <laughs> Did Dr. Darling have too much time on his hands? Who recorded this? Oh, wait, maybe this is like a dream because it's what I think about in my head after watching too many darling presentations. Hey, that's the hotline! That's sacred, you can't do that! <laughs> this is just like when you get exposed to something too much during the daytime. And then at night, this is what you dream about. <laughs> Jesse has dynamite. Wow, that was an experience. <laughs> this is so weird. But it is my head. <laughs> You are such a weirdo, Jesse. Suddenly, I don't feel so in control anymore. Oh. Me. Polaris. Grow brighter. Around one constant, they revolve. Hedron is dead, but you're alive here in me. Maybe Hedron put you in our heads when we met her. Maybe you were always there, and she was just trying to teach me how to trigger you. Maybe I'll never understand. Maybe I don't need to. Trench was the first to be corrupted by the Hiss. Slowly, over the years. His need for control only made it worse. It was Trench who took the projector to the nostalgia department. He opened the door to the Hiss. Just like that. <gasps> this place! With Hedron dead, the Hiss tried to corrupt me too. But I'm stronger than them. We're stronger. They're waiting. They'll try to stop us. We're gonna take control! Reddish yellow outer skin. I don't know how long we were in there for. No going back. Mm. We need to find the projector. This ends here. Dylan. Dylan. The his corrupted Dylan was trying to take over this whole time. But we won't let him. My sister had this dream. A bad dream. And the whole world was dreaming with her. Dylan? She convinced herself that she was awake. She's always been stubborn. I knew I had to end her dream. I had to wake her up. I had to rip down the poster she'd been staring at. Cut off her eyelids to make her see. To save her. No. Dylan, you're wrong. You're the one that's corrupted right now. Oh. He's still there somewhere. Locked inside. I know, because that's how it was for me. Special transmission.
Okay, where's the power transfer? I'm waiting for it. A black triangle. Whoa! Level 30! But we're plowing through them. Because we got a power transfer. So actually, we're okay. Thank you, board. I'm plowing through them even with the cluster. That's how big this power transfer is right now. We're fine. We're fine. We can do this. You want me to go over there? Probably good for me to get a little bit of health back. Where do you want me to go? Over there? It seems a little bit too far for me to levitate to. Is it though? If somebody was shooting at me. You. Wait, do more of you come out? Like, do I... Oh, that guy's strong. Are we all happy? Not really. Do you want me to go over there? It's so far. I don't think we can. Let me continue this for a little bit more. If nothing happens, I think I'll have to make the trip. Oh! Dylan, I'm coming! Nobody's messing with my little bro! I'm gonna get y'all. All of this happened basically because I didn't burn all the slides thoroughly. <sighs> the slide projector needed to be eliminated once and for all. But I couldn't finish the job. Pandora's box was open when Trench turned it on again. No. We're fine. We're fine. Black triangle. <laughs> Nearly died just now. No. Without the board, this would be impossible. So actually, right now, my biggest ally is the board. But they might not be doing this because they want to save me, or humans in particular. It's just that the his are against them. Whatever faction the board really is considered to be part of. Oh. That guy's a little bit tough. That guy's a problem here. Red, red, red. No. Not on my watch. Be quiet. Be quiet. No. I'm taking control here, and you ain't stopping me. 
junior staff member. Do you really think you can stop me? He is a little bit tough, though. Surprisingly. His shield comes back super duper fast. No! No! All of you! I'm not gonna seize any of you because I firmly believe we don't need the help of Hiss to defeat their own kind. Yeah? You all happy now? Oh. Dylan! That's Dylan! Wait for my power to come back a little bit. Oh no! <laughs> Thought I was gonna die because of that. That was scary. No, Dylan. Your big sister has been searching for you for 17 years. I'm not about to give up on you now. It's not red. Oh no! Dylan's in a coma. I don't know if there's anything of him left in there. If he'll ever find his way back. The portal's been closed. But the hiss is still in the oldest house. And the lockdown can't be lifted as long as any trace of it remains. I'm working on a solution with my management team, but there is still a long road ahead. I'm the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. We're in this together. You... and I. Me? Oh! Huh. Real credits this time, right? <laughs> I'm a little bit suspicious. But I, I do believe so. Wait, what happened to Marshall by the end? I thought she was gonna come rushing and saving the day or something, but she just never showed up. Is it gonna be a DLC thing or what? Hmm, well, in any case, that was wonderful. We took control back, not just in terms of getting the hiss out of the oldest house, but it also felt like a journey of self-discovery. Uh, do I really have it straight in my head though? Let me see. Basically, my understanding of what happened in the last little bit here was... When we went to rescue Polaris, or Hedron. I don't think there was ever really anything inside that shell thing. It's just that we were led to believe that. And I'm very much reminded of one of the documents that we read before an executive that said something like, Believing is what makes something real. When we saw that there was nothing in that chamber, we believe that Polaris is not real and she left us. And I think that might have been the one moment of vulnerability that the Hiss infected Dylan was banking on. He never really thought to convince me to join his side. It's more that he wanted to get my defenses down so that the Hiss could get in me and then we'd be on the same side. And that's what led me to being trapped inside my own mind where I wasn't even the director. I was the lowest ranking person in the entire FBC pretty much. Scanning papers and uh, getting coffee for people and whatnot. I couldn't contact Polaris and I think in Jessie's mind, she thinks that without Polaris, she's nothing. And to some degree she might be right because 
Other people at the bureau might be better trained than her, but what makes her really special is because she has these powers. And so without the ability to contact Polaris, she just felt so powerless. But eventually, going through the loops and with Ati's encouragement, I was able to realize that, oh, this is all in my head, and Polaris? Now, I feel like the specific details here start getting a bit vague, but we went through the Ocean View Motel, and we found Polaris there, because we decide where the motel wants to take us, because it's my mind. I'm the one in control here. Not the motel, nor the Hiss, nor anybody else. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. I got Polaris back, and we went to Dylan. We cleansed him, but he's still in a coma, so on and so forth. But for the time being, we've won. We've taken control. What a wonderfully fitting name for this game. Maybe not the best for SEO purposes, but very wonderfully fitting thematically. Wow. I'm really impressed. There are some specific details of things that maybe we'll just never understand, like Jesse says. It's just like mysteries of the universe. Some things are just gonna be probably forever beyond our understanding. Like if you try to ask what the hell Polaris actually is, I don't think we'd ever be able to find the answer to that. Wonderful, wonderful, I'm really happy here. You know, reading about the pink flamingo who could affect the weather, or the rubber duck who zoomed around so much that somebody got a heart attack and died from it. Did they die? I don't think so, right? They just went to the hospital? Or the hand chair that has gravitational effects during the full moon and has human DNA in its composition. All these were really fun to read, and I think it's part of what makes Remedy games so special. I feel like a distinctive feature of their signature style is that the worlds are always very, very realized, and it's very immersive because of that. Like, numerous times, I talked about how, oh, we're just reading this one document here, and they have this one throwaway line that they never bring up again. But little things like that here and there really add to the world feeling real. Like they say, the devil's in the details, and I feel like that's the sort of thing that pushes a great game into being a stellar game. And the gameplay? The gameplay was super fun, too. It was kind of rough when you're trying to get used to all of the stuff, but you have four different guns and you have so many different mods and you can change it out to whatever you like, depending on how you like to play. And we also have a bunch of powers like shields and levitation and launching people, all of which you could have used however you like. Um, the last Remedy game I played is probably Alan Wake. I never got around to playing Quantum Break yet, so I don't really know how much they change in between. But Alan Wake was pretty linear and on rails, and you only have one gun, I believe, because you mostly relied on the flashlight. So, going from that to something like Control, where it's like a Metroidvania, and you got all these different options opening up in terms of gameplay, that's a really big change, but I feel like they handled the transition really well. Again, not sure if Quantum Break had any of this kind of non-linear elements, but to my knowledge, no. So I feel like doing something like this takes a lot of courage from Remedy too, because they're already known for very cool, linear narrative games. They don't need to change their formula, but they did. And it worked out amazingly well. That's the wonderful part. Although I do feel like um <laughs> the Bureau Alert, I never ended up doing even one of them. So I never got a chance to see what it's like, but I think it's probably just going to be destroying some hits and getting some resources. That, alongside stuff like the board countermeasure rewards, I can see that they're trying to give you a lot of different opportunities to get the mods you like. But uh, for me, I didn't really touch them. I didn't really feel like it was necessary. Didn't bother me though, so... I mean, I guess that's fine. Maybe some people out there really want to optimize all their mods and stuff, and those things will be for those people who really want to do that. Off the top of my head, I really can't think of too much to nitpick for this game. The vast majority of everything felt like it was done really well. Oh, I know, the mold. The part where we had to find the mold sore spots. The one in the medical wing was okay because that area was pretty small, but the other one in the um, NSC coolant pumps? That one was a pain. Especially because I'm pretty sure they never taught you to look for those kind of bright green spots to pop. They were just like, hey, go clean up the mold and that was it. 
I'm actually just trying to nitpick on purpose here though, so that really wasn't that big of a deal. Especially in light of the extremely compelling world building and oh my gosh, I'm just so happy with this. I got nothing bad to say. Director! You are the director of the FBC. The crisis is not over. Your work is not done. I'm pretty sure it is. You're talking about side quests, right? But I think we finished all of them already. Whoa, look at me. Execute board countermeasures and bureau alerts to fight the ongoing his threat. Search the dangerous depths of the oldest house for classified bureau secrets and hidden clues. No, I think we did the bulk of it already. Oh. I like my original hairstyle better, but this one makes me look more mature, I guess. Even the hairpin is a freaking triangle. You've gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah, just like with a golden suit. You can vaguely see a the outline of a triangle on my suit. Dang. What did I get just now? Well, first of all, missions. I do not have any missions. Pretty sure that's a good sign. These are whatever. Director Faden Photograph. I'm the director of the Federal Bureau of Control, Jesse Faden. Hmm. Very powerful. Because she's taken control. Even the photo looks more powerful than before. Although I think it's the same photo. <laughs> Slide Projector. Containment Procedure. Mm. The object is a uh, with a vertical tray. The object creates uh, Dr. Darling presentation. Uh, the only uh, to successfully produce this effect resulted in the capture of uh. Object has not been successfully bound. The para-utility of this object does not require binding. Discovered when the Bureau responded to mm, AWE-24, ordinary. Many of the accompanying mm were mm. See files on, oh, director candidates. See files on P6, P7 for details. The entirety of the M was transported to the Bureau for examination to find additional M or other altered materials. Completely redacted. We've seen a lot of items here, but this is probably by far the most dangerous one. That's it. Multimedia. Dynamite? <laughs> what the hell even was that? The hotline. Trench? My reflection trapped in the darkness of the coffee I nurse. Rain turned the lights of the city into a mosaic on the windows. The day's paper lists all the things wrong in the world. The list grows longer by the day. The difference between the morning and the night. Coffee. Whiskey. No other difference. The alarm goes off at 5 a.m. It feels like I just closed my eyes. It's dark. I sit up on the bed in the gloom. I get up, I shower. The driver waits for me downstairs, takes me to the oldest house. An old man stares at me in the car window. It's raining. It's dark. Late at night, he brings me back here. It's not a home, it's a room where I sleep in. Waking up just as tired as I was before going to bed. Endless grind. Wow, that one's really bizarre. Trench was basically just telling me about his day. The future. The hiss is removed! You have beaten the not you. We tolerate you very much. <laughs> ah! DLC? Thank you! Feels nice to be praised by the board. <laughs> Makes me feel competent.
entrench bureau funding. To all executive staff, I know there is some concern regarding our operations exceeding the annual budget. So long as we operate within the oldest house, we are obscured from scrutiny in many respects. If our budget demands are not exorbitant to the point of drawing attention, then they will be granted by the US Treasury without question. The FBC is just another line in another spreadsheet that some lowly accountant won't even notice. Their eyes will skip over us as if we weren't even there. The nature of the oldest house allows us certain freedoms in how we operate. Our being here is no accident. Regards, Zachariah Trench, who is no longer the director. Maybe we could have gotten this before if we came back to the director's office. Because that one didn't feel like an endgame document. Wow, look at that. My beautiful name on this. Jesse Faden. Hey. What? What? That's new. That goes to the hotline chamber. Shawshank Redemption. That's <laughs> the name of the movie I was thinking of earlier. Not important, but that was it. Only took you the entire game to figure out, but good job, Jesse. Good job. Oh, there's a shortcut that allows us to go directly to the hotline chamber. Even if it was a dream, I feel Darling reached out to me through the hotline. Yeah. I have a feeling he and Trench won't be the only callers from the beyond. It's not that Trench was evil, but he himself was corrupted. And that's why the whole mess really happened. Oh, Darling. Darling... I don't think we'll be seeing him in person. Bit of a shame, because that was sort of something that we could look forward to after seeing all those presentations he held. But yet in the end, we still don't get to see him. Right. So what was this one, anyway? Executive, research, containment, maintenance... Which one's missing? I actually don't know, just looking at this. Uh, we can't look at the other maps. Which one's the one that got blacked out? I don't know. Okay. We've heard this one before. This is where we saw Tomasi originally. Oh, guys, no. This is what they mean by the work is not complete. But it's fine. We don't need to go over this. All I want to do is get back to the nearest fast travel marker here. Actually, though... Oh! Jeez! Nearly killed myself. I was wondering if it's possible for us to... find new things up here? This is a place that we can normally access, though, right? Or is it? No, but there's nothing here. Not on this side, anyway. On this side, there's this. I just want to go back to executive to see if anybody wants to talk to me about stuff. Bye. Kind of wrecked the place a little bit, but hey, that's pretty much the norm. It's okay. Oh, we gotta get a janitor on that. That's messed up. Ooh, eight ability points. Freaking put it all in. Hmm? Oh, I don't have enough. Hmm, the remainder of this must be from visiting hidden locations, because those ones give you one point each. Not a big deal. Executive. Maintenance. Research. Containment. Wait, so there really is only four sectors. What is the one that got blacked out? Is it nostalgia? They did mention that it's not a place that we use anymore. It doesn't exist. Huh. But that's like a department, not an entire sector, right? Hey, everybody. Director suit. Now. Now I'm really the director. Oh, I wish we could get it with this haircut, though. 
This one makes me look so old. Hey, everybody. Are you finding the armory? None. Looks like it got shifted. We have rangers checking each sector. Fuck, whose side is the house on? <laughs> All right, we'll keep the teams looking. And post a watch on the old location just in case it shifts back. We need that fucking ammo. No, we're fine now. We're fine now, Arish. I heard you closed the Hiss portal, or uh, whatever it is we're calling it. And if we could just flush out the stragglers. You're joking, right? <laughs> so, what's next for Simon Arish? Well, first off, I'm banning all slide projectors. That's it. <laughs> Proposal accepted. Seriously, though, we need to review our protocols. Research should not be making decisions that endanger the entire bureau. No, fuck it. The entire fucking world without some serious oversight. I think Pope would agree. Certain people in the bureau have been working in the shadows for too long. And I'd like to make these HRAs part of the mandatory bureau uniform. Yes. They're not stylish, but better safe than sorry. I don't think anyone will complain. Not after this. Hmm. Definitely. Research? We can't say they're not passionate about research and science, but we can't have them be doing that at the expense of everybody's safety. What are your thoughts on me serving as director? <laughs> well, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, Trench was fine, but... Well, you pulled us back from the brink, so... Well, I'm honored to serve, ma'am. I mean... Fuck. Shit. Faden. <laughs> Sorry. He'll get it one day. It's fine, it's fine. So, what's the situation in my bureau, Arish? My bureau. The situation is we are still up to our eyes in Hiss. Not to mention the months of repairs it's gonna take just to get this place up and running again. But is it doable? Of course it is. You just might need to tell some rangers to grab a wrench once they're done hunting Hiss. Did anyone ever mention to you that Darling was using the slide projector? Well, Salvador never did, but, um, I doubt he even knew. Look, I'm well aware that it's our job to study and contain the things that we don't understand, but... Well, some of the things that Darling did were way outside of our mission statement. Look, these things are not toys, and acting like they are is only ever gonna end one way. At least Pope seems to understand that. Well, it's secure now. No one can reach it without my say-so. But thank Christ for that. Yeah, Emily seems like she's got a good head on her shoulder, so I'm happy about her probably taking over whatever post Darling had. Marshall's been missing for a while now. Any ideas where she could be? The last time I saw her was in maintenance when I was leading the Rangers out of the Atlas. Yeah, I told her it wasn't safe, but she said she had to go check on something. Did you ask where she was going? Whew, Marshall is not the kind of person you question. <laughs> kind of intimidating, you know? But, uh, she was by herself, if that helps at all. Not really, but <laughs> thanks. Hopefully she turns up. Mm, I think that's gonna be a DLC thing. Sounds like a hanging thread for the future. I'll see you later. You know where I'll be. Alright. Cool. Uh... Okay, we have a reach. Yeah, I found a file on the old director, Northmore. Didn't list any date of death. Mm. Uh, you know anything about that? Could be an error. The record staff process a lot of data. Maybe it just slipped through. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's no data death because he's in the freaking thing in the maintenance sector right now. Powering the entire oldest house. Okay, we have a reach and Emily. Is there anybody else we can talk to here? Because it does seem like we can get some endgame conversations. Maybe Dylan. No, but he's in a coma, so... Well, before we visit Emily... Let's see if we can't find Dylan. No it's a huge huge when do you think Marshall's coming back? She's Never. It's not like her to be absent during a crisis. Marshall's as tough as they come. You don't need to worry about her. I hope you're right. We're definitely gonna come back to that later on. I'll be here waiting for you when you wake up, brother. If you wake up. Here's hoping. No. Oh. Hmm. For the person observing him? Oh, Dylan. Maybe he will wake up when Marshall comes back. You heard the director stop the hiss, right? Sounds like she can really handle things. 
finally someone had the balls to take the fight to them. It's about time we had someone other than an old man at the helm. Actually, I agree. She's beaten the hiss over and over. If we win this thing, it'll be because of her. Aside from us taking back the oldest house, I feel like Jesse becoming the director, taking control. It's about her own mentality too, because we've seen previously that she used to be very... Mm, she second guesses herself a lot inside her own head. But now I feel like she's probably a much more confident person. Because hey, she did do all this stuff by herself. We did it. Nobody else could have done it. Where are the files on parasitic entities I asked for? I found a couple of relevant files in Dr. Darling's office. I'd have to dig through the archives for the rest, but I'm not going through the Panopticon. Not with the altered items loose. Then go see if any ranger squads are available for a fallen tree division. There is no more altered items. I already took care of it. Variants and alterations. His corrupted manifests in vastly different ways. Some hosts remain largely unchanged, while others are barely recognizable as human. What determines this level of alteration? Is it the duration of corruption? It could simply be an evolutionary process, each entity representing a stage of growth in an undiscovered linear progression, leading towards what? Additionally, his entities possess various paranatural abilities. How have they achieved this? Do they gain them from corrupting objects of power? Have they corrupted a single highly talented peri-utilitarian and divided their access to paranatural abilities across a network of his corrupted hosts? As a scientist, I am hindered by the sheer number of questions. It's difficult to identify where one should begin. What is the most pertinent question? How do we kill it? That seems like a good start. As expected from my favorite research specialist, Emily has a passion for curiosity and science, but I don't get that same feeling of almost insanity from her like I get with Darling. So I feel like, yeah, she might be a better person, more suitable for this. Jesse, good to see you. We've got Dylan situated in his containment cell like you asked. I've got medical staff running tests as we speak, and I'd be happy to walk you through the details later. Other than that, what's next? With the slide projector turned off, the hiss are shut out, but we're stuck with the ones already here. We can't lift the lockdown until they're all eradicated. If any hiss ever got out, that would be the end of everything. Well, eliminating them all will take time. Look, I'll do what I can on my end, but my research is progressing slower than I'd like. I think I can help with that. I am making you the head of research, effective immediately. Boom! I want you to use everything the Bureau has, every resource, every confidential scrap of data, and find a way to keep the hiss out for good. That's... really? I, I mean, yes, yes, I can certainly... Yes! <laughs> yes, I accept. You'll do great. Besides, I... Didn't really have anyone else lined up. <laughs> I'm honored, Jesse, really. Underhill? Thank you. Give her all the permissions. Let her look at all the files. Good, good, good. I've looked through the docs we found in Dimensional Research. That slide projector is extremely powerful. You were right to shut it down. How do you feel about me taking over as director? You act like it just happened. You've been director since we first met, remember? I'm mm. still thrilled. Nothing's changed. Not for me. But the Bureau has changed. Trench and Darling are gone. Their knowledge, anything not written down, disappeared with them. They knew the Bureau better than anyone. They're the Bureau's past, Emily. We won't operate like they did. We'll learn from their mistakes. We'll be better than they ever were. We won't ever be like them. <sighs> Look at how confident Jesse is. I love this. That's a good point to make, though. We were always director to the people outside, but inside, we never felt that way. So there was a bit of um, like a lesson in uh, believing in yourself and confidence and all those cheesy things. When the hiss got into my head, I saw some weird things. I think Darling even spoke to me. Does that make any sense to you? 
Well, empirically, no, but phantom voices as well as hallucinatory states are not uncommon here. And considering the forces that Dr. Darling was working with, he could have been transferred to a different plane of consciousness, physically or otherwise. And that doesn't upset you? Oh, very. <laughs> and the fact that he hid those forces from me, it's infuriating. <laughs> But Darling's dream was always to look beyond our reality. This time he may have taken a step too far, but as long as his consciousness can perceive his surroundings, I'm sure he's loving it. Maybe Darling was just trying to protect you from the darker side of his work. Fuck that. I'm not a child. <laughs> like, don't just assume I'm going to consider something morally repugnant. Which it all was. Which it all was, of course. <laughs> wow, I love this. Yeah, he was trying to decide for the rest of us. He should have just told us about it and, you know, we should decide for ourselves. Or something. <laughs> Love it. How was Dylan? The same. I, I can't detect any his activity, but his physiology has certainly been altered by it. And I can't tell if his brain activity is genuine or simply the aftermath of the hiss, like spasms. Dylan could wake up tomorrow for all I know. I really can't say. Then I just have to wait for him. That's fair. He waited a long time for me. Don't worry. We'll be monitoring him around the clock. If he wakes up, we'll be ready. I don't mean that in a hostile way, just... Well, you know. I hear you. My brother isn't exactly popular around here. I hope one day he'll have the chance to change that. Oh, I really hope so. I love all these post-game conversations. Usually we learn very little about... Especially in this kind of like a mystery game where they don't want to reveal everything. You don't really get to learn too much about what happens afterwards, but here we do. So, there was a moment after Hedron died that I couldn't feel my powers. The hiss got into my head. Just for a moment. So that explains the HRA outage. See, before we knew what was happening, the hiss had us. Oh. They were in my head. I saw terrible things. I mean, I was about to go under forever when the hiss was pushed back. The HRAs had come back on. And Dylan vanished afterwards, and we fought off the hiss that came after him. So if Hedron's death knocked out the HRAs, that means there must be a new local source for them to relay. Which I'm guessing must be... Me. Me. You. Hedron is dead, assuming that word even applies to a resonant-based life form. But whatever it awakened in you, the power you call Polaris, is still active. Or at least, that's what my instruments are telling me. I don't think we're ever going to understand all of this, and I'm okay with that. I'm just glad you're here with me. That's good to know. Thanks, Emily. Well, the real Polaris isn't here anymore, so I would assume that she's talking to me. The player? When we were in the motel, they labeled it as Jesse Polaris. I found Dylan attacking the astral plane and the board. What was he hoping to accomplish? Huh. Since they arrived, his have been corrupting objects of power, which have an inherent link to the astral plane. Maybe their goal was to access the astral plane and the board itself. That still doesn't tell us why. His motives are a difficult thing to work out, but I have been digging through confidential files and noticed a strange gap in knowledge regarding the board. Looks like any data on them has either been deleted or was never gathered in the first place. Then maybe it's time someone looked into that. Emily? Maybe it is. Yes. I love this. I love this. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. <laughs> Please, Emily. Not even as a joke. <laughs> I love this. Who moved my wave for me for this recording? Sorry, ma'am. I took them. 
Uh, Darling asked for any visual materials to be stowed for future instructional videos. He asked for anything that looks particularly good in a backdrop. Inform all research staff that any instructional videos are postponed indefinitely. And don't ever touch my work again. She's not really the kind that makes presentations, huh? There haven't been any his sightings in the ocean. Hey! Could survivors be hiding inside? It's possible. I remember a report about a similar incident from 84. The bureau lost contact with a whole department during a house shift. Nostalgia. The head was found in the motel two years later. His arm stuck in the vending machine. <gasps> what? Make a note to send in a search party when possible. Was he still alive when we found him? If the slide oh. Mmm. I think there's one person we can talk to before we end off here. Underhill, right? Do you need something? Wow, she still doesn't care about me. <laughs> Does she even know we got rid of the hiss? I assume you'll be staying with us until the mold is eradicated. Indeed. Until I find a permanent resolution to this pesky fungus business, I'll be here. Perhaps even beyond that, seeing as you are quite understaffed at the moment. Though I hardly have a say in my own comings or goings. Your oldest house won't open the exits until those hiss monstrosities are cleared out. Glad to have you along for the ride. So kind of you to realize we have a hiss problem. Will the mold be under control anytime soon? We were barely containing it with weekly controlled burns. Just look at how it has spread after a few days of non-interference. It's beyond the threshold now. The floodgates are open. So that's a no. Americans. <laughs> what? With Darling gone, I'm putting Emily Pope in charge of the research sector. Are you okay with that? Perfectly. You have pulled Excalibur from the stone and now decree as you see fit, O oh Queen. What a true meritocracy we live in. Glad to hear it. Whoa, <laughs> she is so salty, but you don't get a choice in it, okay? You only care about the mold. At least Emily's researching the hiss. I had a dream. Or something like one. Darling was there. He told me something, but I... can't remember what. I think he's gone. Right. Well, he's never where one expects him to be, is he? Well, thank God. I can finally stop writing these tedious reports that I'm sure he never even took the time to glance at. If you speak to him again, can you tell him I... I hope he found what he was looking for. I'll try. I should be getting back to work. Hmm. She recovered really quickly just now, but seems like she was shaken by the news because Darling and Underhill were old friends. I'll see you later, Rhea. Dr. Underhill, if you please. <laughs> While we're actively trying to get people to call us Jesse, this lady, Dr. Underhill, PhD, blah blah blah, if you please. <laughs> oh, hold on, there's also Langston. All this paranatural power contained in one place is a risk. It, it is. Makes me wonder what other dangers are locked away inside the bureau. Probably we haven't even learned all about all the secrets here, because this place wasn't even built by us. We literally just found it here like this. The director visits my exhibits or something like that. At least some of you are behaving like good little buddies. <laughs> Are you talking to the altered items? Hello, ma'am. I heard about your little tussle over in nostalgia. So, uh, good house cleaning and things will get back to normal, right? Right? I mean, our normal, anyway. Can I get a situation report for the sector? Whew, okay, uh, we still have to perform a proper inventory of the cells. Lord knows how many altered items snuck out during all this. 
Staffing. We definitely lost some people. Uh, gonna have to hit those college career fairs, am I right? Huh. Huh, yeah. Hard to imagine the FPC at job fairs. The hiss <laughs> are still tearing up the place faster than we can fix it, but the containment sector is stable. Ish. Considering the alternative, I'm happy with stable-ish. Yeah, we got rid of the big baddie, but there's still a bunch of lackeys around here. We're not quite safe just yet. Any thoughts on me serving as director? I know it was a sudden change. Oh, uh, no complaints so far. Trench was all secrets, lots of meetings behind closed doors. You seem much more approachable. But if I can give you some advice, ma'am, keep a grip on who you are. I've been here a long time, and I don't know if it's the job or this place, but people change here. And not for the better. I'll try to keep my head on straight. Jesse embracing the life as a director. I always envisioned her sort of making this out as not the director anymore because it's not something she wanted to begin with. But as it turns out, maybe it's okay that we continue on like this. Will you stay on after things calm down, Langston? Are you asking if I'm quitting? Oh no, ma'am. I'm not having some mid-level agent make a mess of my panopticon. Plus, I'm racking up serious overtime hours with this lockdown. Just don't take too long clearing out the hiss. My cat gets... separation anxiety. I'll do what I can. He must have gotten a pet sitter. I hope he did. I'll see you later, Langston. I'll be here. Like always. Alright. Alright. I think that's the last of the people we can talk to here, right? I can't think of anyone else. Marshall, of course, is a mystery, but I don't think now is the time that we'll learn more about her. So why don't we go back to executive and end off somewhere nice? I want to end off somewhere a little bit nicer than this depressing looking panopticon place. Back among my people, where everything is safe and sound. At least in this little section here. Hmm. I do like the increased status with actually acknowledging that I am the director now, but why don't we... As the last thing, why don't we go back to our original outfit? Yeah, I definitely dig the hair more. But it's not as convenient if you want to get your hands dirty out in the wild trying to catch hiss and all that, I guess. Well, my impression after talking to all these people around here is that this is not going to be the last we see of the Control Universe. And we kind of already know this because we know there's going to be DLC. So whenever that drops or whatever related to Control drops, you can probably expect that I'll be back here because I really enjoyed this. And I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing this too. This was Wellens with Control. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you all in another place in another time. Bye!